okay, this looks like a good one. So let's say I wanted to solve this quadratic, which really means I want to know where this graph is crossing the x-axis. Yeah, and now I'm not always going to have a graph. And maybe sometimes if I sketch my graph, I don't know exactly where these points are. But using a little bit of strategy, I can figure out where these points are. Uh-huh. First rule about solving quadratics, if we want to know these points, and I'm talking about these points where the line crosses the x-axis, remember what the y value is here. Yeah. Yes, yeah, zero. So couldn't I just take the equation and set it equal to zero? Yeah. And then guess what I'm going to do? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so here's the equation I'm trying to solve. The equation of my graph, I'm trying to figure out where it crosses the x-axis. Notice it's twice. We'll get to that later. What do I do? Set this equal to zero. Just like that. Now, my next step is to try to get this x squared alone so I can do a square root and undo that square. Yeah, that's the opposite operation for squaring square roots. Hopefully, let's get this negative 4 to the other side. Good, just like that. And now to undo this square, the opposite operation for square ring is square root. Exactly right. So if these undo each other, I'll just have, yeah, X. And now let's talk about what the square root of four is. What number times itself will equal four? Two, exactly right. But wait a minute. We're in algebra now, so we can have negative numbers. Is 2 the only number that I multiply by itself to get 4? Couldn't I do negative 2 times negative 2? Yes! Which introduces a new symbol for us, maybe. This is called plus or minus. This is a way to write positive 2 and negative 2 at the same time. Save yourself a little space. That's exactly what this means. This means two numbers, positive 2 and negative 2. So if I look at my graph, Aren't there two places where it crosses the x-axis? Guess what those two numbers are? Two and negative two. Are you starting to turn that circle around? Yeah, that's exactly what all of this means. The solution to this equation, which is the equation of this graph, these two numbers are where the line crosses the x-axis. Ah, uh ah, -huh. yes. Let's kick this up, man. This is a little bit too easy for y'all, man. Let's kick this up a little bit. Okay, this is more like it. Now, I left the graph off on purpose, right? Because we're not even going to use the graph. We're going to find out algebraically, uh-huh, where this graph will cross the x-axis. Let's find the solutions, the roots, the zeros, whatever you want to call it, for this graph right here. Let's solve. First step, yeah, set it equal to zero. Exactly right. Now, the next step Sounds simple enough, but that's going to look different as we move along. Solving for x here is getting this thing alone so I can do a square root. Yeah, uh-huh. So the first thing I got to get rid of is that 32. Good, just like that. Now there's one thing left stopping this x squared from being alone so I can do my square root. Negative 2. Negative 2 times to undo that it is divide, of course, by negative 2, both sides. Yeah, leaves me here, ready for the square root. And of course, the square root of 16 is 4, but don't forget the, the plus or minus, of course. Remember, you're in algebra now, man. Them days are over. you got to always account for the negative possibility also. So every time you take a square root, always with the plus or minus. And it's for a reason. This graph is going to cross the x-axis twice. And if I wanted to write down the coordinates of those intercepts, what would that look like? Like this? Yeah, like that. If this is the x-intercept where it crosses the x-axis, then the y-value is zero, just like we said our equation equal to. Yes! Man, I hope this helps. There's a part two to this video, though, so make sure you get to it. I'll see you there.